way that we'll be able to get our online streaming reconnected. I just want to really lift up our um, community this morning. We're aware that so many people are struggling with COVID. We have um, people from this church. I know a number of people have people from their workplaces who are really unwell at the moment. So we lift up all of our friends, family, community members, workers, um, staff members, colleagues who are struggling with COVID at the moment and we just pray, Lord, for your healing touch in their lives at the moment. We thank you for the celebrations that are coming up in this church for Shay's baptism next week. We thank you for um, Kate and Jason's ceremony next Saturday. We're really looking forward to these times to be with you together. And we pray, Lord, that uh, for each of us that uh, as we go forward in our weeks, whatever it is that's coming towards us or whatever we're carrying with us from the last week, we just pray that we'll be able to come here this morning and lay it all down before you and just have a sense of your energy and your life and your healing hand in our lives and just aware of how many people at the moment have got, um, yeah, things going on that we know are burdening them. So thanks for this time. Also want to lift up anyone who's visiting with us this morning for the first time either online um, or in presence with us. We thank you, God, for whatever it is that's prompted all of us to be here and especially people who are joining with us for the first time. We just um, pray a special blessing into their lives. I just really want to be mindful today of Mother's Day. We thank you for the celebrations that come with Mother's Day. And we're also mindful that for people who have lost mothers or for mothers who have lost children or people who have wanted to be mothers and couldn't be mothers or maybe people who are waiting to be mothers, that this is a it's a, it's a raw day for many. So we just pray for comfort. And we pray for um, celebrations where people are celebrating. And we thank you that we can come together and pray. Amen. Have a go. Well done. <laughs> Good morning, church family here in the room and to all of our church family joining us online. If you haven't met me, I'm Megan and I have the gift of leading our ministry team um, and uh, being the, the lead pastor in this church congregation. So welcome. We have a few people joining us here in the room for the first time today. So we have a welcome pack for you to say welcome and we hope you feel at home with us this morning. So Sue, thank you for bringing that around to our new folks this morning. There's a beautiful scripture in the message version of the Bible um, from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, and it says this, now that I've put, sorry, now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up to God. This generous father in heaven, Matthew 5, 16. And we heard last week from Cliff in our guest preaching week with um, Cliff Fielding from Alpha Australia. We're called, aren't we, to be a, a, a way that people find God. We're called to walk alongside others and to create an atmosphere in our lives of welcome and hospitality. Am I right? And um, hospitality, we heard last week, it's not about changing people but seeing God change people and seeing God do that work. So... Um, we're going to continue this week in our Surprise the World series, looking at how we can be people who invite others to know Jesus and people who tell who Jesus is and show who Jesus is in our everyday lives. And this is based on the book by Michael Frost called Surprise the World. So it's a great series that we're in at the moment. And this morning we're going to be hearing from our associate pastor, Bronwyn, um, who's going to be preaching this morning. It's going to be great. And we're going to be looking at the theme, sh uh, sharing Jesus one meal at a time, the theme of hospitality. Um, Janet is going to lead us later on in our time of community prayer. Um, and in a moment we're going to be led by David in communion. 
Um, so as we did last week, our children are in with us for the first part of our worship again, which is just so great. And then after this time of communion, our children will go out and we'll bless them out to seeds, our children's ministry time. And in a few moments, uh, we'll also be honouring our women with a special gift this morning. So I'd love to welcome David now to lead us in a time of communion as we remember Jesus and celebrate him together. Good morning, church. Good morning, mothers. <laughs> it's wonderful to come. Is this happening? Can you hear me? I was thinking about the, t the communion table this morning. I was thinking of the hospitality of God. God welcomes us into his house, into his courts, to stand, to grow, to live with him. He comes to dwell with us. It's our joy to come into his house, to this table, just to come into his presence. For those of you online, you may wish to go and get a piece of bread and something to drink. As I was thinking, about it, my, my thoughts turned to Isaiah 53, those well-known verses. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid us on him, laid on him the iniquity of us all. We hold in our hands a wafer, a piece of bread, just a biscuit. It signifies the broken body of our Lord Jesus. And the cup speaks of his blood. Some of us may come to this table this morning bruised, broken, weighed down by grief, pain, sin. Our Lord accepts us as we are. He welcomes us into his table to this table in his presence. In his death, by his brokenness, he has prepared the way that we may come to him. Come to this table, come as we are in whatever state we find ourselves. Some of us may be wounded. Some of us are rejoicing. Some of us may have strayed like lost sheep, as the prophet speaks. Our Lord takes us all that we have, all that we are upon himself. It is by his stripes that we are healed. He is the shepherd of our souls. So we come to the table this morning, quiet in his presence, with grateful hearts. Lord, as we have this wonderful privilege of coming to your presence, to this place, we place our hearts before you. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful, Lord Jesus, for your death on the cross, for your broken body, your shed blood, and of course, your marvellous resurrection, which speaks of our own life in you. We practice an open communion table. If you love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ, please join us to eat and drink bread, eat the bread, drink the cup this morning. The bread reminds us of Jesus' body, broken on the cross. Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body. Let's eat together. cup reminds us that Jesus' blood was shed, that we may be saved. He prayed the price that our lives may be reconciled with him, that we may live with him. Jesus took a cup after giving thanks. He gave to them saying, drink from it, all of you. Let's drink together. Our Lord is good, his hospitality at the table of the Lord. And with grateful hearts, with gratitude for all that he's done for us, we give back to him. 
He's given so much for us. And, uh, of course, part of our service back to him is our offering. And we're grateful that we can give back what he's given to us, to him. Lord, we thank you for all that you've given to us. And Lord, we are taught in Scripture to give the first fruits back to you. So Lord, that which is given online, that which is given in the box at the front of the church, I pray, Lord, that you would use it for your glory in this community, something that we can give back to, to you. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen. just had my daughter give me a craft that says, I love God. So there you go. There's worship in the room this morning. So good. So good. We are going to honour our women this morning. We honour all women on Mother's Day in the life of this church community. And I've asked our youngest members if they would be happy to give all of our young ladies and women, young and wise, um, a gift this morning. So receive this gift as a symbol of us as a church honouring you, honouring all of our ladies and women for the mothering and mother figure role that they play in the life of people around them. So thank you to Jamie and Zoe and Jasmine for helping with giving out our beautiful gifts this morning to all of our Young women and our ladies in the room, receive these with our appreciation. Very special. And one for Mayor, please. Zoe, one for Mayor. One for Mayor as well. Zoe, one for Mayor. Good job. Beautiful. And down have we had our audiovisual team covered. Beautiful. Aren't they doing an amazing job? Love it. Woohoo. Thank you. So today we honour and we celebrate all of our Willie Church women. Mother's Day is special and has so many layers of um, it being so special for mums. But we as a church every year honour and celebrate every woman for the role that they play in our Willie Church community and the role that you play in our wider community as well, and for the many hats you wear. And this year, we are calling you strong women of faith. You are strong women of faith. So receive that gift as an honouring of the role you play and the very, very important role you play. And I'm sorry we can't pass a chocolate through the live stream, but those ladies joining online, there'll be some next week for you. <laughs> We're going to pray in a moment, a Mother's Day prayer. But before we do that, I'm going to bless our children as they head out to seeds. That's all still happening, I'm sure. Beautiful. Great. Okay, so let's pray for our kids. God, we thank you so much for our children in our midst today and the children in our Willie Church community also not here. We pray your blessing on them. Jesus, may they encounter you this morning as they spend time together in seeds. And would you be at work through Kate and Charlie and I think it's Maya this morning as they assist and lead and disciple and help and guide our children. Holy Spirit. Awaken our kids to who you are this morning, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Bless you as you head out to Seeds. Thank you for helping and being such an important part of our church community kids. We're going to pause now and pray a Mother's Day prayer, which has been written by Pete Grieg. So this is a moment for us to celebrate and also, as Liz has already beautifully um, brought into our midst, acknowledge the light and the shade of a day like today for many of us. So let's join in prayer together, church. We pray today for mums, Lord, for new mums, for seasoned mums, grandmothers, 
and stepmums, mothers-in-law and adoptive mums, fostering mums and solo mums. We thank you today for those of us who are joyful this Mother's Day morning, for those of us who are deeply thankful to be a mother, for those of us who deeply appreciate our own mother and our relationship with her, for the joy and affirmation of being appreciated today for the mothering role we play. We give you thanks. Loving God, we pray for those for whom this day is sadder than it is happy, those who feel they have failed, those who are grieving children they never had, or children they still long for, or children they have lost, those missing their mums or their children even more than usual, those who grieve a lost or dysfunctional relationship with their mum. Father God, for those of us for whom Mother's Day is a day that is more painful than joyful, we lean into your ever-present love and healing today. You are faithful and kind, especially for those of us who are orphaned, abandoned and hurt. Please heal our many hurts and restore to us the joy and beauty of motherhood in our families, in our communities and in the nations. And for those of us who are unable to be with our mums or children in person, draw near to us, God, by your spirit and grant us your comfort and your peace as we look forward to the next time we will be with those we love once again. May we find creative ways to celebrate and mark Mother's Day in ways that are appropriate to us and in ways which are sensitive to those around us. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Amen. Next weekend, there are two special celebrations happening in the life of our church family. Um, next Saturday, we of course have the commitment ceremony for Kate and Jason at two o'clock here in the chapel, which is going to be such a highlight for us as a church. And Jace, I hope and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a highlight for you too <laughs> and for, for Kate as we stand with you and celebrate with you um, as you commit your lives to one another. It's going to be absolutely wonderful and knowing what's going on behind the scenes, it's going to be a wonderful service and it's one not to miss. For those of you who can't join in Port person next Saturday, we will be live streaming Kate and Jason's service also. Next Saturday is Shay's baptism. So it's going to be a highlight. It's going to be wonderful. Come along, be part of it. If you happen to not be able to come in person again, please join us on our live stream and don't miss Shay's testimony and the moment that she is going to be baptised and die to her old self symbolically in the waters of baptism and be raised to new life. It's going to be so amazing and wonderful and it's going to be a real highlight, Shay, to celebrate with you and to walk with you and stand with you next Sunday. Um, and we will also have some refreshments after next Sunday's worship as well, which is going to be wonderful so we can kick on and celebrate afterwards. It's only two and a half weeks now until we launch Alpha. So how have you gone this week with inviting your friends? And um, we're going to watch a video now which is encouraging us around who are we going to invite to Alpha in the coming couple of weeks. This old friend of mine, Helen. My best friend. My friend called and invited me to try Alpha. They handed me a invitation. It was just a random invitation. And I said like why not why not? Let's try it. Why not? Let's go. And I found like a like a really awesome community of people. They helped me find who I was just by listening. Alpha helped me in the knowing of God. I was a different person from that moment on. I knew I had purpose. I felt really comfortable when I started to invite my friends. I've seen Alpha really impact people that I work with. I would definitely encourage people to get involved. It's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. It all turned out to be life changing. <laughs> Thank you.
So let's be encouraged to be inviting this coming week um, as we have been encouraged the last couple of weeks. Who are we going to invite to Alpha? Is there a neighbour? Is there a friend? Is there a colleague? Uh, Is there a family member in your world? Um, Or many of those who God is prompting you to invite to come along to Alpha. So Alpha's launching in three Wednesdays on the 25th of May here in in Willie Church at 7 o'clock. We're kicking off with dinner on the first nights and we're going to then have dessert and coffee and tea on all of the following six Wednesdays. All the info is on this postcard. And we're also really asking you, church, to pray about signing up to serve in Alpha. Serve on one week, serve on more than one week. We need people to help with dessert, with our audiovisual, with um, washing dishes for our dishwasher. We need people to be here to be part of small groups. Um, most, and we need people to pray. Um, it's so important for us to have a prayer covering over Alpha. So um, pray about it, consider it if you haven't already. And there is a little um, sign-up sheet hopefully you received on your way in. It's a white sheet of paper that says sign up to serve. And we would love you to sign up, give that sheet to myself or Bronwyn on our ministry team, and let us know how you would like to be involved in Alpha. We can't do it without the whole body being part of it. So um, it's going to be a real team effort. Very exciting. Um, And you can sign up on our website, willychurch.org.au slash alpha. All the info is there. So if you're directing a friend or a colleague to info online, the website and also our social media, Instagram and Facebook, has all of the information as well. So you can be sharing things on your social media as well. That would help us heaps to get the word out. All right. As always, we would love you to keep an eye on your Willie Church e-news, which comes out every Thursday. And if you don't already receive that, you can sign up to receive that on our website or come and have a chat to me after worship. And if you want to get involved in the life of the community, join a connect group. Connect groups meet through the week and are really the hub of our community and discipleship life, um, apart from our Sunday gathering. So please um, sign up to be part of a connect group or sign up to volunteer in the life of our community. You can do all that on our website as well. We're going to hear God's word now from Luke chapter 14 as we prepare our hearts to hear um, God's word preached to us this morning. So thanks, Jonathan, for bringing us the reading this morning. Good morning, church. (coughs) One Sabbath, when he went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they they were watching him carefully. Now, but now he told a parable to those who were invited when he, when he noticed how they chose the places of honour, saying to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honour, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your pay, place to this person, and then you will begin with shame to take the lower, lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when you, your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honoured in the presence of all who sit at t- table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who hum- humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbours, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just." Thank you, Jonathan. Well, good morning. My name's Bronwyn. I am the associate uh, pastor here at Willie Church. Morning. So it's it's Mother's Day, right? So I've been, you know, reminiscing, been thinking about actually all the grandmotherly figures in my life. So growing up, I had my gran, my grandma, and a great aunt. So that's my dad's aunt. See, both my grandma and her sister were widowed in their 40s. My grandma had four children, my great-aunt had none. 
And so my great aunt moved into a granny flat in, uh, on my grandma's property sometime after my grandfather died. And so she was there throughout my childhood. Uh, but also, she was the cook of the family. She made the best food, and I grew up enjoying that food. So especially on our Sunday lunches, which we had many, uh, we would, you know, we were very regular. We would sit down on a Sunday afternoon and I'd be there with, you know, my parents, my sister, my cousins, my aunt, my uncles, my grandma and my great aunt. And it's to the point now where, you know how you have that smell association, like you smell something and you're just like, oh, I'm home. Well, for me... I'll so usually it's your parents cooking, right? But for me, it is the smell of curries. So my favourite smell in the world is onion, ginger, garlic, curry leaves and rumpe frying. And I realised the other day, that's the smell of my great aunt's house. My grandma never made curries. Um, <laughs> very rarely. So now the smell of curry creates different impressions in different people. And while I love eating a curry... The smell is not all about my stomach, right? Because it takes me back to those Sunday lunches. And it takes me back to sitting around the, t the family table eating and talking. It also takes me back to my aunt's kitchen where I'll be sitting at the bench while she's cooking and I'm just chatting with her, not actually learning any cooking skills, which I now regret. But still, wasn't time wasted because time spent around a table, around food, has a profound, profound impact on our life. And that's what we're talking about today, right? So Jesus ate with people a lot of the time. Think about it. How often are the stories and teachings in the Bible set around a meal or a feast? So in today's passage in Luke 14, Jesus is at the house of a Pharisee and they're discussing how to be a guest, how to be a host. And, you know, Jesus in his... his being his very provocative normal self when he's amongst Pharisees. But also in Luke 11, Jesus is again eating with Pharisees and he calls them out on, his hypoc on their hypocrisy. So when eating with the religious leaders of the day, he challenged the practical outworking of their theology. But the Pharisees weren't the only ones he ate with. He often scandalised the Pharisees and religious leaders by eating with the outcasts of society. In Luke 5, he went to the house of Matthew, also known as Levi, a tax collector. And he ate with tax collectors and others, who the Pharisees refer to as sinners. So if you're wondering why the religious leaders were scandalised, it's because eating a meal together was indicative of friendship, intimacy and unity. So you only ate with people who you were close to or wanted to be associated with. That is, people of your own social standing. So hence, Jesus was often invited by the Pharisees and the religious leaders to eat with them because Jesus was a religious leader and teacher. But tax collectors, prostitutes and sinners were all considered outcasts. They were unclean and often unwanted. But Jesus still ate with them. I don't know if we fully understand the impact that would have to be an outcast invited to dine with an important person, right? If we look at the story of Zacchaeus in Luke 19, he was a tax collector, again, someone who was rejected by Jewish society for his collaboration with the Romans and probable th thievery. Tax collectors were notoriously dodgy, stealing from their own people. And yet, Jesus still eats with them. Actually, Jesus invites himself to Zacchaeus' home and Zacchaeus welcomes him gladly. And you see in verse 7, all the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. What a response. And Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. 
for Zacchaeus, an outcast, being welcomed back into the community by Jesus led to his salvation. Tim Chester, in his book, Meals with Jesus, wrote, The marginalised cease to be marginal when they're included around a meal table. The lonely cease to be lonely. The alien, that is the foreigner or refugee, ceases to be alien. Strangers become friends. Because having a meal together welcomes people into community. It breaks down the social hierarchy. Meals are an equaliser. And so for tax collectors and sinners who who Jesus ate with, he shows his love for them through a meal. With Jesus, they are no longer considered outcasts, but beloved members of the community. So having uh, having a meal together, it fosters community because it breaks down barriers to talk freely. It provides time to really delve into discussion And it provides space to enjoy each other's company. So does everyone remember the the story of Mary and Martha in Luke 10? So Jesus and his disciples, they're gathering at their house for a meal. It's a group of friends eating together. And while we often focus on the, you know, Martha's doing, which is bad, Martha shouldn't be doing, it's Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Mary is commended for enjoying Jesus' company. That's just what she's doing. Jesus invited people to share in that intimacy of having a meal. And that same intimacy and friendship exists today as we sit around a table. So when I was studying at Bible College, you know, I moved into a house with a, a bunch of girls. And not only did we make an effort to eat together every night, We also had something of an open door policy with uh, the other people we knew from Bible college. And we would spend so much time chatting, you know, talking through big theological concepts, complaining about assignments. One time there was a planking contest, there was karaoke, there was board games, movie nights. And since then, we've all gone our own ways. You know, some are still in Melbourne, spread all around the different suburbs, some are interstate, some are overseas. Nearly all of them are now married with kids. But out of all those people I did Bible college with, it's those that I regularly ate with that have developed into a community that still knows and supports each other today. Eating together provides a space to get to know each other. And inviting people to a meal also provides an opportunity to show love for the guests. Right? How do you show love? You show love by spending time with people, sitting around a table just talking. And you show your love through the gift of a meal. Right? You, you give them, you serve them a meal. So while in Luke 10, you know, Martha gets told off for her for working, it's not a blanket rule against serving one another. In John 13, Jesus washes the feet of the disciples doing the job of a servant. And in Luke 7, Jesus is at the house of another Pharisee when a woman, a sinner, interrupts a meal. And when the host rebukes Jesus for allowing this, Jesus rebukes the host for failing his duties. He says, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, But this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. The Pharisee failed to serve his guest, failed to perform his duties as a host. And instead, an uninvited, unwelcome woman took the host's place in order to serve Jesus. When you invite someone to share a meal with you, you show your love by serving them. So those family lunches I talked about earlier, they continue, not as regular as when I was a child, but at least, you know, every kind of celebration on the calendar we get together. For example, today, everyone's at my aunt's house having lunch this afternoon. And my aunt loves hosting us, not just because she enjoys cooking, but it's how she shows her love for us. 
Is it inconvenient and time consuming? Yes. Does it require a lot of effort? Yes, particularly with how she cooks, yes. But it shows her love all the more. Emil fosters community by showing love in a tangible way. And now for Christians, we know that our community should be centred on Jesus. Right, so in Acts 10, Peter has a vision about food and this vision represents leaving the rules and social etiquette behind and following the Spirit's lead. So when you sit down to a, to a meal, what's leading? What's the centre? Right, if we're out with people, then it may be about social etiquette or the right conversation topics. But how often in reality are our meals about, you know, just quickly getting sustenance or focus on getting the kids to eat or you've got some mental checklist or just numb exhaustion at the end of the day? In John 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And in Luke 9, Jesus feeds 5,000 men with five loaves and two fish. And in verse 17, it says, they all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. Do you know the communion or the Lord's Supper that we did earlier is supposed to be, used to be an entire meal. And in Luke 22, it's, a, it's the Passover feast, a celebration in which Jesus instigates the Lord's Supper. Can you imagine a meal in which Jesus shouldn't be the centre? Can you imagine a situation that wouldn't be better off with Jesus at the centre of it? So how do we invite Jesus to be the centre of a meal? So I'd say praying is always a good start. And now, like, I know I, I'm terrible at this. I always forget to say grace before a meal. I just, I can't seem to remember. It's driving me nuts, but I'm working on it. But also, it's probably about letting the Spirit lead us, like Peter in Acts 10, right? Following where the Spirit leads, not just in our conversation, but in who we invite. So if Jesus is at the centre of our meals, and meals foster community, then no matter what happens, our meals should be missional. So at my old church, I led a connect group, and early on, we decided we wanted to host dinners regularly. So one fortnight, we would all do a study together as a group, and on the other fortnight, we'd host a dinner and invite people in. And it could be people from our church, you know, we do that to build community in our church, but it could also be people outside the church. And pretty much it was to show people that Christians weren't weird. That's what we were, that was our aim. And we had a variety of people, but, you know, sometimes we had lots of guests, sometimes not so many. Uh, sometimes the conversation flowed easily, sometimes not so much. But one time that has stayed with me uh, amongst our guests was a woman whose family had grown up Catholic, but the child sex abuse scandals had destroyed the faith of this entire family. And I'm talking generations. They were devastated. And this woman had a chance to express her hurt and anger over this. And we, as a small Christian community around a dinner table, could also express our grief and horror at the situation. But we could also express the love and compassion of Jesus. See, making a meal missional isn't about making people Christians. It's about inviting them into the friendship and intimacy of community. It's about loving people with no expectation of receiving anything in return. So in Luke 14, Jesus says to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbours. If you do, they may invite you back and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Invite people outside your close social circle and don't expect anything in return. 
So Michael Frost from his book Surprise the World has a suggestion that we invite people into three meals a week. One from your church community, one from, out, one from outside your church community and one from either community. And with three meals a day, that's three out of 21 meals a week. Now, I know that can feel a little overwhelming, so before you, you know, mentally switch off, here are some tips and ideas. Pray. Before anything, pray. Pray about who to invite. Pray to love them, right? To love them like Jesus loves them. Pray over your meals. Pray as a family. Pray. You can also ease into it. Don't be inviting, you know, people over for a fancy dinner three nights next week. That's not going to work. Make it achievable and sustainable. For example, it doesn't have to be a dinner. It can be lunch or breakfast. And you don't need to be making new friends. You can invite people who are already in your life. Right? So who is already in your social sphere? And who's already around for meals? Right? Don't forget about the lunches. Is there someone or perhaps a group of people in your workplace or school who you can eat lunch with? Or perhaps someone on the train you meet up with in the morning for a coffee and a chat. You're not starting from scratch. Most likely you already have these people in your life. And do it with others. Gather with other Christians who have the same heart, whether at work, school or in the home, and share the load. The cooking, the, pre the preparing, the conversation. And if someone offers to help, even if it's a guest, let them. And it doesn't need to be a home-cooked meal or in a house. Order takeout, go to a restaurant. Um, if that's too expensive, maybe it's dessert or afternoon tea. And keep it real and simple. It doesn't need to be perfect. Lower your expectations on yourself. And don't be afraid of the messiness of life. The Christian author Jim Peterson in his book Living Proof has a story about a friend called Mario. So Jim and Mario had been studying the Bible together for four years before Mario became a Christian. Reminiscing, Mario said to Jim, do you know what it really was that made me decide to, decide to become a Christian? Remember that first time I stopped by your house, we were on our way someplace together and I had a bowl of soup with you and your family? As I sat there observing you, your wife and your children and how you related to each other, I asked myself, when will I have a relationship like this with my fiancé? When I realised that the answer was never, I concluded I had to become a Christian for the sake of my own survival. Meanwhile, what Jim remembered from that conversation was his children behaving badly and his frustration at having to correct them in front of Mario. Yet Mario saw the grace of Christ binding that family together. Peterson comments, our family was unaware of its influence on Mario. God had done this work through our family without our knowing it. We tend to see the weakness and incongruities in our lives and our reaction is to recoil at the thought of letting outsiders get close enough to see us as we really are. Even if our assessment is accurate, it's my observation that any Christian who is sincerely seeking to walk with God in spite of all his flaws is reflecting something of Christ. When inviting people into community, invite them to see you and your family as you really are. Otherwise, it's not real community. So let me pray. God, we thank you for food and for the gift that it is. And we thank you for community. Help us not get overwhelmed or fearful at the prospect of inviting people into our lives. Help us see its importance and give us wisdom about how to go implementing it. And God, help us to change our world one meal at a time. Amen. We're going to spend a little time in prayer together. Whether we pray with words, song 
or silence. Prayer is the invitation for God's kingdom to come and God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father God, we gladly surrender our lives to you in worship and praise. Thank you that you've brought each one of us safely here today. But Lord, this world is not safe for many people. And we pray particularly for the people of Ukraine. For the injured, the traumatised, the bereaved. For those who've lost their livelihood, homes and community. And especially for those who've lost hope. Lord, we cry out to you now from the depths of this human tragedy that in the power of your might, Lord God, you will turn this situation around and bring peace. We pray for the ordinary people in the surrounding countries who've opened their homes and taken in so many refugees. We think of Bronwyn's friends who are part of a missionary team in Poland and who have asked us to pray for these things. They ask... Please pray for us all as we face what is likely just the beginning. As thousands of our contacts flee Ukraine, we will likely be their first port of call. Pray for those who've chosen to stay behind and face what comes. And pray for those in Poland and elsewhere who are receiving and welcoming refugees, that we will have the stamina and wisdom to do so as it is needed in ways that are sustainable. Lord, we are stunned by the enormity and tragedy of all this, but we thank you for your people who stand up and live out the love of Jesus to welcome and uphold so many people in their grief and trauma. And as people who belong in this community of faith, we pray that we will always live creatively, generously, ready to respond to your leading through the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we pray for those in our community here with health concerns and we pray for healing for Libby, Ray Russell, Athol Leach, Ros Dawson, Sarah Thompson, and Tex Houston. We bring you other people who have needs at the moment, Lord, and we pray especially for Trina as she's looking for a new position with her current con employment contract ceasing. We pray for Shay as she begins a new job and for her preparation for her baptism next Sunday. We pray, of course, for Kate and Jason that all arrangements will go smoothly over the next week and a wonderful celebration on Saturday. We pray for Alan and Tiff and the Gilmore family on the death of Alan's dad in Scotland. May your presence be strongly with them all at this time of sadness. Lord God, we bring you the work of this church in our community and we praise God for our mainly music program and the families and the volunteer team. We give thanks for Sarah, who's going to be leading this term. And we ask that some new volunteers will strengthen the program and support Sarah. We thank you for the partnership between Williamstown Church and Footscray Church in the new youth program. We ask that the kids from both youth groups will develop friendships and it will be a blessing to both church communities. And we ask that another youth leader steps up into this program. We thank you for the new Between Children's Program as well. And we pray for more volunteers for all of these ministries that have so much potential. We share ourselves and our gifts 
with openness and expectation of what you can do. Lord God, continue to deepen and grow our connect groups as places of encouragement, joy and learning that just enriches our relationship with you and with one another. For those who are seeking meaning and purpose and spiritual answers in their lives, draw them to Alpha. We want to seek out those people and help them find the answers that they are looking for. You said, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened. Keep us seeking, keep us knocking, keep us inviting. We pray for those we have invited and for those we are thinking of inviting. And we pray for ourselves that we will step out in faith and sow the seeds no matter what. Together as a body of Christ in this community, living God, draw us deeper into your love. Jesus, our Lord, send us to care and serve. Holy Spirit, make us champions of the good news. Stir us, strengthen us, teach and inspire us to live your love with generosity and joy, imagination and courage. For the sake of your world and in Jesus' precious name. Amen. What a morning. Thanks. Thanks, everyone who's contributed. Thanks, Bron, for those inspiring words. Let's uh, sing together New Wine, the song about um, Jesus making new wine from us. Let's stand together and sing. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful you I don't need to understand make me your vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing but all you have given me Jesus bring me of me in the crushing in the pressing you are making new wine in the soil I now surrender you are breaking Jesus. 
just bring you wine out of me. Jesus, bring you wine out of me. Cause where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. be seated for a moment. I love that in scripture there's a picture of um, God as a mother. In Isaiah 66 13 we read um, these words, as a mother comforts her child so will I comfort you and you will be comforted. And I love the pictures of God that we read about and can be um, drawn into in Scripture. And so I pray that that is an encouragement to you this morning, wherever you are at on this Mothering Sunday, Mother's Day, that you would encounter a God who comforts you um, with only the comfort of a perfect Heavenly Father. Um, that a perfect Heavenly Father can give. May that speak to all of us today, wherever we are on this Mother's Day. Thank you so much, Bronwyn, for speaking um, to us this morning, for preaching to us. Um, I know it's really challenged me to think about how I can, um, in a simple way, um, lower the bar <laughs> from my Donna Hay cookbooks <laughs> right back down to when Bronwyn joined our ministry team and Bronwyn joined our church and me and Charlie said, we've got to have Bronwyn over for a meal. That's natural. Um, and I think about the other day having a coffee with Naomi and Jasmine and I had little Edie with me and just the conversations that happen when you share food. Is anyone with me? When you share food, it doesn't have to be cordon bleu. It doesn't have to be in a fancy restaurant. It can be like our leadership at the end of last year. We had a meal at the Thai restaurant down the road and there was conversation, there was sharing, there was celebrating, there was, uh, like you shared today, Bronwyn, that intimate in exchange, hey, of, of conversation and life together. So thanks so much for speaking this morning, Bronwyn. We've been blessed and I think challenged as well to hear that um, uh, message to us. Uh, this morning in our series. And next Sunday, we are going to have a meal together after worship. So we're going to have Shay's baptism and then Liz and some other incredible hands are preparing a, um, a lunch for us. It will be simple, right, Liz? Because it's all about simple, isn't it? And making it accessible like you um, shared this morning, Bronwyn. So it's going to be a joy to share that time together next week. So blessings, church, as you head out into your week. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send each of us out today and into the week in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. And God, this week, would you be at work in our lives? We just offer ourselves afresh. Holy Spirit, come into our lives, come into our days, come into our hours and inhabit our lives. And help us to align ourselves with you, God, and your purposes for us. In your holy name we pray. And all the church said, 
Amen. Amen. So go in peace, church, and go in peace, all of you who've been joining in online also. Amen. Come